This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. <laughs> My name's Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. That's well, right, it is. Welcome to 2014. 2014 is awesome. Welcome. So far, every day has been the best day of the year. <laughs> Today was amazing. What's your New Year's resolution? Um, 16 something by 12. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My for real resolution is um, be a bigger and don't give so many Keep them all to yourself. I hope you bleep that. Those f***s, you want to keep them for yourself. <laughs> Unless you're feeling like in the giving spirit, in which case, give all the f***s you'd what's like. Your, you know. What's your resolution? Uh, 1280 by 800. Because your real resolution. it's 640 per eye. And Mine I've been doing a lot of Oculus Rift. Buy more cats. Buy more cats. <laughs> <laughs> Paul got a kitten. Let's, let's cut to kittens. <laughs> That was amazing. I love the baby. He's so cute. I'm okay. going to go over there and molest hey, him. Hey, what did people tune into? To They tuned into Hack 5. What did they tune in for? Segments. That's right. And we've got some <laughs> great ones this week, I'm glad don't I we? That Shannon, yes, we you do. are taking so you're taking a lot of bits and pieces even from Hack yes. Tip and putting them together. You may be wondering why I have a Mac. I'm sorry for everybody who hates Macs, but honestly, Whatever. if you go to Def Con, everyone uses one. And there's a reason. And I'm going to be explaining why it's important to not leave your computer on your desk whenever you have to go make number two. There you go. <laughs> That's why you tuned into Hack 5. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a follow-up here on the segment from last week, the failed uh, drone perch and stare thing where we tried to put a pineapple in a place where it shouldn't be and get it back very you easily. You never do that. Uh, well, hey, you know what? I think where we did have you try to stick just your a solution uh, <laughs> on a roof. I'm sorry. Okay, I have a cold rooftop. and I took, some, meds. I took some meds. So everything, just we don't should take just anything roll I say today seriously. into the segment. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Let's go. You see, Paul, I think it looks much better like that, you know? Do not attempt to adjust your television set. This one's just crooked. Paul's doing upgrades on the set, and I'm just playing around here. I'll put that right back to where it was. Because otherwise, we're all like, ah! Ah! It's like Voyager getting hit with photon torpedoes. That's not why we tuned in. We're talking about drone stuff, and the set's still under construction. So let's grab some power tools and head our way over to my office. Because um, I'm having some fun. Uh, Actually, just a real quick update, if I haven't done this update recently or not, or whatever have you, uh, I'm doing fun stuff with uh, Tom Merritt on the Daily Tech News Show, so dailytechnewsshow.com. That was really fun, and I'm hanging out a lot in IRC. And anyway, um, point being, I want to take a quick moment to do a little recap about some of the drone stuff we've been talking about, uh, some of the follow-up and feedback from you guys, some of the future plans that we have as this is a work in progress series, and then next week I'm actually going to be bouncing back over to the other Mesh Network project. You know how it is, multiple projects at the same time. It's good stuff. Uh, actually, no, I, that's not the case because next week we'll be in Las Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Show and I'm sure you will all be tired of it after the first couple of days and so will we. But um, until then, let's talk about drones. Uh, I was so excited to see this clip here on YouTube from uh, Peter. You guys know Peter, he's been down uh, in the studio before from the quad shot, uh, just brilliant, brilliant guy. And uh, he actually got the huge opportunity to speak at the uh, Chaos Communications Congress. I mean, the CCC. It was their 30th CCC in Hamburg. And I'm so bummed that I missed it. But anyway, uh, we got a little shout out there as people were talking about drone security. So let's take a quick listen. One more from the internet, please. Okay, how secure are the solutions you presented for controlling a drone against attacks so how easy is it to take control over a drone that my yeah my pal is controlling right now so this is what i mentioned also in the talk it is a problem currently it's like they we it's just completely non-encrypted it's like basically we are at this stage like the internet started out a 
practically is still. It's like all unencrypted stuff running everywhere around. It's like you run, like there, there was a great example from the Hack5 guys just again a few days ago. There was a great video where uh, Darren Kitchen took like an aerodrome and I think a DJI other quadrocopter put a pineapple on it, flew to the aerodrome and overtook its Wi-Fi and controlled it from there. So it's it's obviously bad. We have to work on this now. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's really necessary to do. It's like we need to secure this. That was really freaking awesome because Peter actually does some amazing work in the world of drone autonom autonomy. Autonomy, it's a, it's a word, uh, with the Paparazzi Project. Another open source project as far as drones are concerned uh, was emailed in by David who mentions that I should check out the APM 2.5 by 3D Robotics. Uh, he says they've got a full range of drones, the source code is open and can be modified for what you want. He uh, wanted us to check out his two drones, so let's take a look at those. Really cool hexacopter. What's awesome is 3D Robotics is right here in the Bay Area uh, in Berkeley, and so I've gone ahead and contacted them and I've signed up to get some of their gear in and I can't wait to play with it because they do seem to have some really nifty stuff that might be more better, better, more gooder to, for this particular purpose that is perch and stare. Pop a Wi-Fi pineapple on a drone, put it on a rooftop, listen when you get bored or you got your target or whatever have you, come straight home, but no doing this with sticks. Um, and so that's, uh, that's a pretty nifty opportunity there. And another feedback email that I thought was interesting was here from Andrew who wanted to say that he loves the Wi-Fi pineapple drone segment test and he was wondering if we've considered experimenting with creating a mesh network by using a drone to actually drop, uh, using electromagnet to drop pineapples on rooftops. We're working on a solar rooftop pineapple thing for mesh networky goodness. I think it's a little too heavy for drone deployment. I'm not even sure if an electromagnet would be the right delivery mechanism. But furthermore, we're actually working with some open source drone guys, uh, not 3D Robotics, but some other uh, open source drone guys to come up with a pineapple in the sky kind of droney thing that we'll talk about more in the future. But yeah, I just wanted to give you that feedback and kind of give you some idea of where we're going and take a look at some really cool app stuff that I probably should have been aware of before last week's, uh, I wouldn't call it a failure, but um, attempt. And you should oh, just, just attempt, just keep attempting, whatever it may be. Just keep doing more of that. So let's go over here and try more gooder stuff. So as I mentioned last time, the major element that I'm focusing on at the moment is actually the cell phone that's going to be going on our drone because I want to use something that's super simple for the pineapple to gain internet access from. And any cell phone that can create its own Wi-Fi network the pineapple can use its second radio to piggyback on, and that also lets us use the phone's uh, you know, features to give us cool real-time data back, whether it's just from the camera or also from GPS and other sensors like that. So I'm just trying to you know, use a inexpensive general purpose device for something that can benefit all of the other greater systems. And as you guys know, we uh, initially attempted with this horrible, horrible prepaid phone from T-Mobile called the Prism 2. Uh, I got it because it's Jelly Bean and because it would run Hangouts. Uh, more on that in just a moment, um, but, uh, and, and mainly because of its size and because of its light weightness, but it's also like a one gigahertz with like a potato chip for a processor or something. Anyway, it's, it's 128 grams. Uh, so it's not too heavy, but it's just horribly slow. Um, to put that in perspective, the drone, the just off-the-shelf drone that we're using, at least for these tests before we get into the more cool autonomous open source stuff, is uh, this DJI Phantom. And I know that it has the payload capability of lifting at least 120, 130 grams because that's what the camera module that comes with it uh, weighs. So to put that in perspective, 130 grams for this, uh, for this essentially a Wi-Fi camera that records onto a micro SD card, it's kind of like GoPro quality that's on the Phantom Vision. To put that in perspective to some of the other hobby grade stuff that's typically used in what's called an FPV or first person view setup, and, and that is to aid the, or in this case, to aid the pilot me in actually landing it on its target. Now, later on, we'll probably remove that or it won't necessarily be um, a primary system because it will be mostly autonomous. Um, what the hobbyists use are a really simple uh, CCD. This is actually a Sony CCD that's in most security cameras, along with 
a transmitter. This happens to be a 900 megahertz transmitter. And then of course we've got a, um, you know, a three cell battery here to power it all. And then we've got a mess of dongly goodness to tie it all together. Uh, that comes out to 175 grams. Uh, plus on the back end, you end up with a nasty receiver like this, and then you've got to carry around a video screen like this, and you can already see, see why I'm leaning more towards just using a cell phone on the device, or on the drone, and a cell phone on the base station, because the, nobody wants, who, what's, this is, yeah. Um, and also there's the benefit, of course, of using either a powerful Wi-Fi network that we use, or to go even further range, use a 4G system. So for that, since this phone does not do 4G, uh, two big changes right now in, as we progress through this project. Uh, first of all, I'm using a Note 3. I uh, happen to have a Note 3 laying around before this uh, gets shipped out, and it is um, obviously much faster <laughs> than the Prism 2. And what I uh, initially intended to use was just a, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, I wanted to either use um, RTC for uh, web broadcasts, real-time communications on HTML5. It's really fantastic, but it wasn't supported by Chrome. I will note, however, uh, the beta of Firefox on Android does support it. And so you can actually use those chat applications that way. It's very similar to Google Hangouts. I ended up going with Google Hangouts. The frame rate was horrible. But what I didn't realize is that obviously I'm not the first person to think of this kind of stuff. And there's this fantastic app uh, called Wi-Fi FPV or first person view. And so this is the Wi-Fi FPV app here for the, I guess you would call it the client, which is actually the drone. And you'll see it has, you know, just it just opens up the camera. It's got some real basic settings where we can change things like enabling OSD. Aha, the OSD or the on-screen display will actually give me bearings. It'll actually use the accelerometer and the GPS in here to actually show me what direction I'm going and give me some orientation control, which is kind of nice. Um, it also, since it, what it's essentially doing is it's running a streaming JPEG server, and so I can actually adjust the quality here. So at 100, the quality looks really good, but of course it uses more bandwidth. I could actually drop the quality down here to 1, or 1. And now, let's go back and start our stream. And I can pick it up over on the viewer app. Let me just... There we go. Um, and I just pick up the URL. So it's just streaming on port 8080. Um, and uh, we're both on the same Wi-Fi network. My idea here is that phone will be obviously connected to the Wi-Fi pineapple. So now I just need to be within range of that pineapple. So with a nice Yagi antenna, I should have some pretty good range on it. I'll go ahead and start that. And as you can see, I have an absolutely horrible image, but it is low bit rate. And that means that I'll be able to have faster uh, refresh rate, which I think is more important to me. And you can see as I tilt the phone, I actually get bearing control and I can rotate it to see my different, um, you know, what direction if I'm pointed west or north and that's gonna be really helpful. So there we are, that's my update for this project, the direction that we're going. And of course, this is one of those where I really wanna get everybody involved in. So if you have some awesome ideas like electromagnetically dropping pineapples from the sky, hit me up, feedback at hack5.org. Uh, stay tuned next week, we're gonna be at CES. And then after that, it's back to drones and mesh networks and whatever have you. Uh, I will see you there. Doesn't matter if you're a curved 4K display or flexible wearable underpants. When you have that great idea, you need a domain and hosting fast. Every moment counts. And here's the thing, domain.com's quick discovery system and their easy checkout process make it totally simple to get your website online in like no time. I can't tell me how many times I've had to like bling and I go over there and then boom, like ns1. Yeah, website is up. Right? I love these guys because it is totally affordable, it's easy to use, it's totally reliable. They are huge on social media. Hit them up at domain.com. Give them some Hack 5 love. Uh, it really just makes it a fun place to do business. And get this, uh, the guys over at domain.com, you guys have heard me tell you this. They're fun to drink with, but they're also really cool pals that love Hack 5 and love you guys, so they want to hook you up. Go over to domain.com and at checkout, use the coupon code HAK5 for an additional 15% off and love. So, uh, yeah, do that. When you think domains, think domain.com. And we're back with the trivia question of the week. So first off, last week's trivia question was, what is an ECO? 
And yes, I know, a lot of people sent in other things that mean ECO, but I was looking for one specific thing, and the answer was an electron coupled oscillator. Super geeky, yay! Now this week's trivia question is, what TV show first introduced virtual reality as a plot device? And I know the answer because it's a super awesome show and I love it, it's amazing, even though the newer version is so much better. So you can answer that over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome swaggy swag swag.